Hi there, I am Keisha George. I warmly welcome you to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Living Spring Miracle Center. Here at Living Spring, we love God passionately and we love others compassionately and love ourselves unconditionally. We are glad that you are part of our service and we believe that you will be greatly blessed. So please sit back and be expectant of what God has for you today. Our Father, our eyes are on you today, Lord. As we lift up our faces to you, Father, Lord, let our faces be enlightened. Amen. Visit us, Father. Amen. Touch us, Lord God, in places where no one knows what we are going through. Break through, Father. And let every vice of darkness be broken. In the name of Jesus. Let the blood speak over us today. Thank you, precious Lord. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Welcome once more to the Redeemed Christian Church of God. The Redeemed Christian Church of God is a covenant church. And in this place, living waters of miracles flow Amen. in the name of Jesus. Today I'm going to talk to us about God still heals. If you turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah 53, our Bible passage for today, Isaiah 53. It says that surely he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. We ourselves thought that he was smitten of God and afflicted. It was because of our transgressions, your transgressions and mine, that he was pierced. He was crushed because of our iniquity, our sin. And the chastisement or the chastisement for our peace, for our well-being, fell upon him. By the stripes or the scourges that were laid on him, we are healed. Now I want you to take note of some things because many of us think that we are not qualified for God's blessing, that we are not qualified for God's healing. When we are in deep trouble, the devil tells us that we are not qualified for his deliverance. But his word says to us that himself, carried our grief, our pain. Himself carried our sorrow, our pain, our discomfort. He carried these things and we ourselves, we looked at him and said, ah, ah. he is suffering for his sin meeting of God and afflicted. And I want you to note the beginning word in verse 5. It says, but, but, taking us back to where the problem started. He said, but, it was for our own transgressions that he was pierced, that he was wounded. Now you remember that they put a crown of thorns on his head and blood was flowing. They pressed it into his into his skull. And sometimes we don't think through these things. I remember a day I got some very tiny, like a hair, um, what do you call it now? Like a hair, a single hair inside my finger. At first I didn't know there was anything. The finger was just hurting me, my thumb rather. And I kept thinking, what on earth? Then I saw this little black strip under my skin. And I had been in discomfort and pain for about two days. Until I took a pin, and don't do that, please. 
But I was feeling so bad. I took it and opened and pulled it out. And then I was relieved. So you can imagine somebody with a crown of thorns being pressed into his head. So he was pierced. Remember, he was also, they put the sword in his side. They put the nails in his hand and the nails in his feet. But he was pierced through for our sin. So it was for your sin and I. He paid our ticket. We got a, a, we got a traffic ticket and we, we ran the stop sign. They sent us a ticket in the mail and Jesus paid it. He was crushed. Humiliated. How many of us like being embarrassed? Have you ever been embarrassed before? Huh? Have you ever been embarrassed before? I remember one day, my kids were still young. We took them, I uh, so I dropped them off at school. It was a rainy day. They had put their mud feet on the seat. I didn't know. And so I went out. I dropped them, and I went for an important business meeting. And I walked through very confident, finished what I was doing, and somebody called me and said, come said, your dress at the back is all stained. It was red. You know what that means for a woman? And it was a white dress. So they didn't know it was more. They thought it was something else. I ran into the restroom. I tried to wash the cloth. I don't know how I got back into my car. Because I had to walk through broad streets. Whether I walked on my head or I walked on my feet, I don't remember. I was, <laughs> for days, I was seriously embarrassed. That's the kind of, and sin, and sin disgraces people. You know that? Sin is a disgrace. That was why they stripped Jesus naked on the cross. Our sin that we should have been disgraced for, that we should have been exposed concerning, Jesus bore it on the cross. What did I say before? I said he paid our, our ticket. But he was pierced through because of our own transgression, crushed for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace is upon him. So I want you to walk from the premise today that whatever it is that is not pleasant going on in your life, that Jesus took care of it already. Okay? Because the reason why problems are in the world today is because Adam and Eve sinned against God, right? They brought all the problems to us. But when Jesus came, he took all the problems from us, okay? So you, are, you have a right. You know we like rights in America. Uh -huh. It's my right. It's your right to be well. It's your right to be whole. It's your right to live in liberty and freedom spiritually. I'm not talking about the right and liberty to carry stuff to um, White House. Right and liberty to be spiritually free and not be in bondage. To sleep at night without being pressed down. To go about your daily business without hearing voices. To go to sleep at night without having panic attacks. It is your right. Spiritual liberty in Christ Jesus. Wounded for our transgressions. And one of the things that make us sick today 
is what we eat and what we drink. And there's all this hype about eating well now, eating healthy, organic food. Don't take too much meat. I put, I put the too much meat. Some people say don't eat meat at all. But for me, don't eat too much meat. Be careful about what you put in your mouth. Be careful about what you drink. Don't drink too much soda. Don't drink take too much junk food, and so forth and so on. But God knew all along that we would get to this place in life. And he said to the children of Israel, I know that this problem of food and drink has always been. He said to the children of Israel, and he says to us today, he said, serve me. Amen? Exodus 15, he, uh, Exodus 15, 26, he says, serve me. Serve me. And what will I do? I will bless your water and I will bless your bread. But what is the precondition? Serve me. Serve me. You can't sit in church. You have to serve. He said, serve me. Serve God. And he says, I will bless your bread and your water. And I will take, I've taught you about that several times, haven't I? That he will bless your bread and water and he will take sickness and disease out of you. But you serve. And you know you cannot serve God in sin. You have to serve God in holiness and truth. So food and drink can bring sickness. But God the healer said, I will bless your bread and water. So we have to learn how to bless our food, to receive our food with thanksgiving and ask the blessing of God upon it. And teach our children, before you put it in your mouth, give thanks and, and eat. I didn't say bless your Coke. Your, your, I didn't say bless your soda. Neither did I say bless your double... We are a cheeseburger. <laughs> I said food. <laughs> food. Food is different from anything to fill my tummy, right? Food is nourishment. Bless your food and your water. These are some of the things that make us sick, our food and what we drink. Then we have things that are poisonous or toxic. In 2 Kings chapter 2, if we quickly go to 2 Kings chapter 2, if you can help me, and I'm going to start from verse 39, 2 Kings chapter 2, where the, I, I beg your pardon, yes, 2 Kings chapter 2, the prophets wanted to prepare a meal and they went and gathered what they thought was vegetable and they cooked it. And immediately they ate it, they realized that, no, this is not vegetable. This is poison. And they cried out to Elisha, the man of God, and they said to him, I beg your pardon, 2 Kings chapter 4. And they said to him, There is death in this pot. How many of times have you eaten something and after a while your tummy begins to turn? Has this ever happened to you? I want you to talk back to me. <laughs> your tummy begins to turn and you get into excruciating pain and you run to the restroom. And immediately you get rid of it, you are relieved. You see, because God in his infinite wisdom has designed us in such a way that our body is able to fight off some of the things that try to come upon us. Amen? That is why we must take care of our bodies. But in this particular instance, that wasn't going to work. They said there is, there is poison in this pot. There is death in this pot. So sometimes we take things that are toxic, things that are poisonous, things that damage our health. But what happened? God's prophet was there, and he prayed. Well, he said, um, he prayed over them, 
and God healed them so that it did not have the kind of effect that it should have had on them. So no matter what is going on, God always has a solution. Amen? Amen. God always has a remedy. God always has a cure. God always has a way out. Death is this effect. And what did he do? He threw in some flour in it. And poured it out for the people. So there are times that you might have to use some remedy. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. There are times you may have to use some remedy. He threw something in. He threw some meal, some flour out in it. I don't know that flour kills poison. But in this particular instance, that was what the man of God did. And I'm sure it was under God's instruction. There was a king who had a boil and they said boil some things and apply it to it, right? So, and in Revelations we are told that the trees were given as healing for the nations. So there is healing all around us. Amen. So there are some things that can naturally help your healing process. So there was poison in this particular situation. But God intervened. Our environment can affect us. Second Kings 2. Verse 20, I believe. I hope I'm not mixing it up. The men of the city said, concerning the city of Jericho, they said, this city is good. It is pleasant. However... Let everybody say, however. however. They said, the water is bad. The land is unfruitful. And what did he do? He said, bring me a cruise of salt. They gave him the cruise of salt. He threw it in the salt of the water. And from that moment, the water was made so our environment can make us sick. We know what is going on in Mississippi right now with the water situation. There are some, some of us, we live in an environment where there's radio, radioactive materials or some kind of other toxic materials, industrial waste, it's getting into water. So our environment can cause sickness. And especially today, in the kind of age where we live, where there's heavy industrialization, heavy use of chemicals, heavy use of all kinds of uh, artificial materials, there, is, there are a lot of environments that, has, that are not healthy. So when you want to buy a home, or you want to rent a home, please do your due diligence and make sure that there's nothing hidden somewhere where toxic foams or... <coughs> or things flowing under the water, is getting into your water system. We know what happened in Fort Washington a few years back, where the area, you know, there was water, there were some things flowing into their water source. Environment affects our health. It can have an adverse effect. Sadness and heaviness. Sadness, heaviness, anxiety, those things affect us. A lot of people have depression today. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 22, that a joyful heart is good medicine, but what does a broken spirit do? When you are discouraged, when you are overwhelmed, when you are troubled, it, what does it do? It dries up the bone. Remember, the bone is what keeps you standing. It's your skeleton that keeps you standing. So when the bone is dried up, what happens? That person collapses. 
That is, it's therefore critical that you put yourself in a place where you are constantly being encouraged, you are constant, constantly being ex uh, exhorted, you are constantly being taught, you are constantly being fed with the word of God that does what well, that brings life. You are not around people who tell you that it is impossible, people who tell you that that's what happens to X, Y, Z, people who tell you that your problem is beyond solution. You don't need them in your life. You don't need them. Joy is good medicine. That's why it's good for us to come and worship and raise up our hands and jump and shout and sing hallelujah. Because the joy of God comes inside of us as we, as we worship and the joy of God is what? It is medicine. So when you are in a place of worship, what you are actually doing is you are receiving medication. That's why when we have this um, third uh, Sunday after service that we say, hey, those we, service is closed, you can go, but those who want to worship God remain. The people who remain, what are they doing? They are receiving medication. Spiritual medication. Every time we come into God's presence before and we are worshiping God, like the choir leads us every Sunday, what are they doing? They are giving us medication. Spoken words and our health. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Have you noticed how many people, how many times you are well, you are happy, you went to work, you came back, you ate, you slept. The following morning you went for your doctor's appointment and you sit in front of the doctor and the doctor says, ah, we ran some tests and these are the results. I, we think you need to go and do some extra tests because it might be X, Y, Z going on. The minute you leave that place, you become sick. Yesterday, there was no pain in your leg, but now because doctor said that he saw something there, the pain has started. <laughs> or he said, you know, I noticed that the immediately you begin to show symptoms. Why? Because there is power in the word that comes out of our mouth. That's the Bible says that Faith comes by hearing. If the, if the doctor never, I'm not against doctors, they are doing their job. If they never said anything was wrong, we know something may be wrong, but why don't you feel something is happening until you are told something is happening? And then you begin to worry. And then you begin to imagine. Please make sure you do your physicals on time. Amen? You do your physicals, and if there's anything you are feeling anyhow, immediately check yourself out. But understand that spoken words are powerful. The Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing the bones. And when you sit in front of that doctor, and that doctor says, you know what? Everything is going to be all right. How do you feel immediately? You feel it fine immediately. Because pleasant words are what? It's encouraging. I remember, I went to I, um, um, my primary many years ago. She, so she referred me to um, a OBGYN um, for my, for you know, the woman for your regular whatever, she said, look, go to an OBGY. So I went. Every time I would sit in front of this woman, she would be looking sad. She would, she would say she wants to test me for this. She wants to test me for that and this and that. After two, three appointments, I went back to my doctor. I said, I don't want her. <laughs> Give me somebody else. Give me some. Because it was always bad news. Hey, the test is there, but I still... So she sent me to somebody else. And this somebody else, when I get there, she'll say, hey, sweetheart, how are you today, sweetheart? Da, 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 da. By the time she, she would have been in and out, and I would not even know she was in and out. No bad news. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Spoken words 
pleasant words are a honeycomb. No matter how bad the situation is, if somebody is saying to you, you will be fine. You will be all right. Let's trust God. Your faith begins to rise. You go to the one who says that, you, you will die. <laughs> they told my mother. They said, for. They said, the stage where you are, only four people out of 100 make it. And if they make it, they will be dead in four years. But I was ignorant in those days, you know. I was, I hadn't had too many of life stories. So all I knew was the Bible. I would go to bed and sleep like a baby. When God said to me, he said, a thousand will fall by your side, ten thousand by your right. He said, it will not come near me. You know, when he said that to me, I believed him. I, I will, the day they did her surgery, my cousin came into the room. He wanted to tell me that she's out of surgery because they said, go home. My uncle was in the hospital, he was the doctor. He said, go home. And so when the, he called my cousin to tell him, in those days there were no cell phones, so they had to ring the house line. So when he called my cousin to say, she's okay, she has come out, we thought, because they also told her that by the time this, uh, the, the surgery finishes, she may never be able to walk again. So my uncle stayed until she woke up and moved her leg, which was early hours of the morning. So when she moved her leg, my uncle now got up and called my cousin and said, she moved her leg, I'm going home to, to rest. Here she is. When my cousin came to tell me that mommy's surgery, that she has woken up because, you know, and that she moved her leg, he said, he looked at me and he wasn't a believer. I was a Christian then. He said, I could not wake you up. He said, because you were sleeping like a baby. May the peace of God the peace of God that passes every human understanding. May it garrison your heart Amen. and keep you. No matter that storm in life, may he keep you in his peace Amen. until your victory is won. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If I was awake worrying all night, would, what, would I have done anything? But God gives his beloved sleep. As many as can sleep at night, May the God of heaven make you sleep like a baby. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your association will control your exposure. And exposure will affect what the possibilities are in your life. Evil communication corrupts good manners. If you are keeping the company of people who have NFAs, no future ambition. They are not going anywhere. They are your friends. They are their one. You, the people that you will go to and you will say, hey, hey, you know, <laughs> this is what is going on in my life. And they will pull out a party invitation for you and give you, uh, you will say, Pastor has come back again, and tell you how much the latest stash will be. They are your friends. Not the people you will pick up and call and they will say, let us pray. Not the people you will call and they will say, I'm coming to your house right now. And they will kneel down with you and intercede for you. No future ambition. They are your friends. Association controls what you are exposed to. Associate with people who will expose you to faith. Because faith controls the possibility in your life. Associate with people who will make your life better. People who are going somewhere. People who will tell you this is where the next job opening is. People who will teach you how to do that interview. People who will tell you, you know, maybe, you, maybe it's not yet time for you to ask for this, for this promotion. Do this, do this, do this, because by the time that promotion will come, you will be at a higher level. Not people who will deceive you. They will say, hey, come, let us, 
let us take you to one person who will see. May all four seers be blind. <laughs> yes, you, what are they see? And then when they see, the thing does not happen. Then they will tell you it's because of something. Come and do more. And you too. You'll be following them like sheep to the slaughter. God is our healer. God is our deliverer. God is our provider. God is our victory. Faithful service. God said, serve me. I will bless your water and I will bless your bread. When you are walking with God, God says that I will bless you. Remember, this is a month of unstoppable blessing. Sincere prayer in godly humility brings results. God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and they will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. Even when our land has pollution, God says, if my people, if we as a city, we as a community, we as a nation, if my people will humble themselves, if they will repent, if they will pray, God, in essence, is saying, even when things have been damaged beyond what people think can be repaired, he said, but if you, his children, Christians, called by, do not be a part of the people who are saying it's Republican, it's Democrat, it's none of your business. You are kingdom citizens, amen. You belong to the king. The, the only party you belong to is the party of Jesus. Yeah. Not APC or PDP or obedience. <laughs> or disobedience. Who do you belong to? You are Jesus' party. Say, I'm Jesus' party. I'm Jesus. Because when we, the people of Jesus, we pray, we the people, we are the people of Jesus. We impose a godly kingdom in an ungodly world by our prayer, by our obedience, by our repentance. Sincere prayer in godly humility, if my people who are called by, God is waiting for us to pray. Church, let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. Angels are standing by. The Holy Spirit is standing by. God is standing by. And none of them does anything until you pray. Are you listening? Where we are now, there are angels all over. Because God, especially with this, our babies that we are carrying, because God says that their angels are before him. All of them have angels that keep them. You as a child of God, if you are born again, you have angels that are standing next to you. They are there. They are all over here. However, it's like a military army. When you, when you deploy your military, they are fully armed. All the arsenals are out there, the nuclear warheads, everything is there. If we, if we are talking about America, super, America power, it's there. But who carries the suitcase to say you can deploy that nuclear power? Who carries it? The president. That's why you don't give it to any silly president. <laughs> don't give it to any silly president. I tell you, you are a child of God. You own the secret code for the deployment of heaven's nuclear armament. And until you, you give that go ahead, nothing happens. That is why we must pray. Because the minute we, and that is why the devil does not want us to pray. Because the minute we begin to pray, he's in trouble. When we stand as children of God and we begin to pray, the angels begin to walk. They begin to walk. That's why in the beginning I said God rent the heavens. Because over every gathering of children of God, there are, there, 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 there are spiritual stratophiles. Some of them and the, and the devil, the darkness, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this, of, of, of this world. Spiritual wickedness, we are in low places, in high places. That's where they are. And when you pray, where does your prayer go? But when spiritual wickedness in high places are there, what happens? They try and stop it. 
That's why you continue to pray. And you continue to pray. That's why you must come for worship. Because as you worship, it's, it's like shooting arrows through there. It scatters them. It scatters them. And God is able to say, hey, angels begin to move. My child has deployed the nuclear weapon. The, the, the secret court has been hit and the military begins to move forward. Amen. Are we going to pray now? <laughs> Something is about to happen. Amen. Stand up on your feet. And you begin to speak a language that he does not understand. And they're already walking right now. The weapons of our warfare are not cut out, they are mighty through God. Makrohiba kashanda laba. Le proko takrohiba. Haraba shende le prohiba. Makatatakolo prohiba. Herebo shalababa. Zendeke yiba ha. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I'm closing. If you are here, you do not know Jesus. You've prayed these prayers. For them to work in your life, you need to surrender your life. I want to pray with you. Because nobody must live here with all the stuff they came out, came with. Your angels are still standing next to you, but unless you give your life to Jesus, they cannot de be deployed in your behalf. So whoever you are, just wave your hand to me. Whether you are here or you are listening from uh, or online, just wave your hand. You want to give your life to Jesus because I want to pray for you before, before I now pray generally for everyone. Raise your hand wherever you are. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. Let us pray. Father Lord, I pray for all your children. And I ask, O oh God of heaven, we have called on you. You said, Lord, that if my people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray. You say you will hear. You promise that you will answer. Lord, we have called on you. Deploy heaven's army now. Let them begin to do the work that you assign them to us to do. You say they are supposed to minister to us, to serve us, to bring your word to be accomplished in our lives. And so, Father, deploy them now. We release, Lord God, the word. Let those who minister to the hearers of salvation be deployed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we are asking for healing. We are asking for deliverance. We are asking for promotion. We are asking, O oh God, for provision in every area. Jehovah, do what only you can do. And we will give you and you alone the glory. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, if you believe God has had you, shout a joyful hallelujah. Okay. I believe that you have been greatly blessed by today's service. We would like to keep in touch with you, so please do follow us on all our social media platforms. Follow us at RCCGLSMC on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you. Remain blessed, and we will see you later.